Okay, what's going on, photo peepers? Uh, this is Mr. Claver here, and today we're going to do a digital painting. Uh, the the objectives that I want you to learn are learn how to create a basic line drawing using an overlay layer. I'm going to I want you to learn how to copy and paste images from the internet into Photo P. Uh, I want you to learn how to use the paint bucket and the gradient tools. And I want you to create a digital painting using elements and principles of art. Now, what are the elements and principles of art? Well, usually with every project that I do, I try to infuse uh, a couple of the, of the uh, concepts of those. And, and for today, we'll be using two principles of design, pattern and variety. And in case you don't know what pattern is, pattern as a principle of design may be defined as regular arrangement of repeated same elements such as line shape colors that are repeated over and over again in the composition when you use pattern with this next concept which is variety variety is the principle of art that adds interest to an artwork uh, variety works through juxtaposition and contrast so when an artist places different visual elements next to one another they're using variety so straight lines next to curvy lines or organic shapes next to geometric shapes that kind of stuff that kind of contrast adds variety so for today we will be using photo P um, so make sure you go to photo P.com you don't need Photoshop to do this project because this is basically the free version of Photoshop on the internet obviously not as powerful or without the bells and whistles but for this project it will suffice so the first thing you need to do is find a picture that you want a digital paint it can be a personal picture a picture of a celebrity animal whatever I I really don't care uh, it, whatever motivates you so for me Eddie Van Halen recently died and uh, you know I, I kinda have this theme going with guitarists for some reason so I'm just going to stick with that theme. Now, when you look it up on Google Images or whatever browser uh, search browser you use, hopefully they have a you know something called Tools. So after you look it up, go to Tools and change this to Large. Make sure it's large. I I cannot stress that, stress that enough. Don't get something kind of you know tiny. Um, anything above 1,200, anything above 1,000 or 800 pixels is is fine. So once you find your image, I'm going to do this one. It looks fairly easy. You're going to right-click, copy image. Then you're going to go over here to Photo P and go to File, New. Just hit Create and then Edit, Paste. Now, before we start you know, messing around with it, I do want to bump up the resolution. So here's how you do that you go to image image size and you'll see it's got 72 dpi if it says 72 you want to bump it up you want it to say 300 so if yours does not say 300 change the dpi to 300 and hit ok i guess it's taking forever there we go view and if it, it Chances are it's going to zoom in really big. That's fine. Go to view, fit in the area, and it'll go back right to where you can see everything. So we don't really need the background layer, so I'm going to highlight that, right click, and delete. But we do need a new layer, and this will be our drawing layer. So you can go up to layer, new layer and over here it's gonna pop up layer 2 where it says layer 2 just double click on that and type in drawing layer because that will be the layer that we draw on alright so that layer is highlighted now you go over here make sure you got black over white if you don't you can just click the this little black and white icon right there and it'll go right to it so black over white and then I want you to select a brush and it's kind of weird. It's, it's a little different than Photoshop. You kind of got to push on the brush tool. So like, usually you can just highlight it and let go. But for this, for Photo P, you actually have to literally click on it. All right. So I have the brush tool. Now I want to zoom in on. And here's the magic, the zoom tool. 
I'm just going to click and then you drag like this. You want to kind of get this close to your your subject and go back to the br brush tool, unfortunately, sorry. And you kind of want to see how big your brush size is. So I'm going to experiment right here. So for me right now, it's looking like I'm around... You kind of want to, if this is your, your person's head, you, you don't want your, your brush size to be much smaller than this. So for me, it's 27, but for you, it might be a different size. You just kind of got to play, you know, play it by your eyes. You kind of got to judge it. And when I click on and drag, this is kind of how big it is. So yeah, it's a little big, maybe a little smaller. And if I messed up, no big deal. Just go to edit, undo. And I do want to make this smaller, so maybe about 17. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good uh, proportion there. So look at this size. That's kind of the size you want. Now, like I said, it might be different in in your photo P based on how big your person is, because mine's kind of small. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to trace the outside almost like a silhouette we're just doing the outside now when I get down here to the bottom I can either use the scroll on my mouse which I hopefully I would strongly suggest using using a mouse for this uh, using a finger pad is going to be a nightmare um, and you can scroll down using your scroll bar or you can hold down the space bar on your uh, laptop or computer keyboard whatever and you'll notice this hand pops up when I let go of the space bar it goes back to the brush but when I hold down the space bar I can click and drag and you know move down and not you know do anything but when I let go of the space bar it goes back to the brush tool so I'm gonna just go ahead and kinda zoom around here and outline his body and then I'll catch up to you at the top of his head. Alright, so when you get to the, t you know, to the top, and you've completed your trip around your body or your face or whatever you're uh, looking at, and you kind of want to see the rest, remember, you can always go to view, fit the area, and you can kind of see everything together. Uh, if I turn off layer one, which is this eyeball, you can kind of see the outline that you have already made. And I'm going to turn that back on. Um, now we want to zoom in and make sure there's no breaks anywhere, like there's no gaps. Uh, you know, kind of like, oops. Make sure there's none of those because when you color this in, uh, if you say you color this in, it's just going to seep out there. So make sure there's no breaks anywhere. And zoom in again. Except this time, we probably want a smaller brush. So I'm going to go considerably smaller. Um, I wouldn't go much smaller than probably this size. And now we're going to basically segment the different color chunks and anytime the detail changes what do I mean by that we have this brown up here so I'm going to whoops edit undo I'm not on my brush and I have to go back down to wherever I was I think it was nine like yours might be different alright so see this dark brown spot I'm just gonna outline this and make sure there's no breaks so it you know, is a shape by itself. Now this yellow that I see here, I'm going to try to outline that as well. And you don't have to be perfect because this is, you know, close enough. So right now I'm outlining the yellow. And I want to make sure it closes off and is its own shape. Oops, I missed a little spot there. Yeah, me definitely make sure you don't have any gaps anywhere. And... Doo -doo -doo -doo. So it's, there's that yellow section. And then it looks like there's a different brown section right in here. Like I said, I'm. it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just close enough. 
And then that goes over here. Remember that if you want to, uh, while you're zoomed in, hold down the space bar. You know, you can move the picture around so you don't have to constantly zoom in and zoom out. I know that can be a, a pain in the old tuchus. Alright, so do all this different brown right in here. That's different than that darker brown looks like. And I'm making some liberty. I'm taking some artistic liberty with uh, the way this brown is. It's fine. It'll it'll look fine, I, I hope, in the end. Because now I'm, I'm doing different browns. I just want to make sure everything's uh, separated. So like this dark brown right there is different than that dark brown. And we have those white highlights. I don't know if you, I'm not doing those. That's just an exercise in futility. Do, 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 do. So there's a shape right there. Now when you do the face, this is very important. You want it to look like a face. So make sure you take your time. And you, this is where you don't have to make sure that, you know, there's... Uh, a line closing off a shape or something and you'll see what I mean when I'm when I'm done with this um. alright so there's a shadow right there that I want to make sure gets put across and then there's that one right there there and that one and now I'm kind of going over here to the hair on this side and I'm trying to keep it segmented into different colors now I can't really see his eye right there so I'm just gonna draw the dark part that I see and hopefully that when I color it in it kind of makes sense Do his eye right here. This is kind of going to be weird looking. I can guess his eyebrow in there somewhere. And then we have his nose right here. I said it's going to look a little weird, but. It'll look fine, don't worry, when we color it in. Alright, so right now if I turn this off, it's kind of like a, you know, like a coloring book. It looks like there's an opening right there. I don't know what's going on right there. Okay, that's a, a lighter spot. And then maybe I'll do some of these highlights. Yeah, what the heck. Alright, so after you've done that, and you know, uh, it kind of looks like like that. Now you want to go in and do the rest of the body, which is, I know it doesn't sound fun, but we got, it's got to be done. So, and I don't, you don't have to do these patterns. I'm just going to leave that shirt plain. I'm just worried about the major details here. I, I just want to make sure this is colorable. So I'm going to do the, the arm, which is completely white. And you just kind of want to work your way around. And you definitely want to do shadows like this. You want to outline these. You know, getting wherever the color changes greatly is what you want to trace. Now, I still always suggest draw what you see not what you know so I, I don't even know what to do up here as far because I can't really see his, his fingers so I'm just going to uh, kind of cut it off I know his hands kind of like that and then I see these parts right here I'll put those in why not 
and then I'll do this part as well because there's a color change there and if you want you can get that one even though it's kind of small and then I'll do this one over here I don't even know what's going on up there it's just all bleached from the lights can kind of see some of the details but like I said it's really hard to see so don't make stuff up just draw what you see it'll make sense eventually hopefully I know that goes there and I know I'm, I'm doing what I basically told you not to do but it, it'll be fine it'll be fine I hope Sometimes I, I I don't know how these digital paintings are going to turn out. Sometimes they turn out really cool. Sometimes they don't. I'm hoping this is a cool one. And don't give yourself a headache by, you know, over analyzing this, and, you know, outlining every little detail. I mean, sure it'll look nice, but I'm not even doing that. I'm just doing the basic. You know, it's still very thorough. But I'm not being OCD about, you know, making sure, oh, I, you know, I stayed within the lines. Oops, I go, I went down a little too far right there. I mean, nobody's really going to notice. And make sure you, you're trying to get rid of any gaps. You want all these kind of shapes closed off. I cannot stress that enough. I will say your hand will get cramped up, so you know, take little breaks every now and then. Because uh, I'm start my carpal tunnel is starting to kick in, and that does not feel good, especially when you get to my age. And yeah, the arthritis that uh, you you swore that you would not never get as a kid, teenager. Yeah, you got it. Something you guys have to get to look forward to as you get older. It's just great. Wonderful. You know, waking up with back pain. Whatever. But hey, it's another day of glorious life. It's all that matters. Alright, and I would strongly suggest uh, also as uh, when you're taking breaks to even... Uh, you know, go to view, fit in the area, and turn that off. Because then you can see, oh, yeah, see, that looks pretty cool. I don't know if I like those guitar strings there. That looks pretty stupid. So I'd probably get erase those. But everything else looks, it's starting to look pretty cool. So I'm going to zoom in. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of those. And if you need to get rid of some, use the lasso tool and just select around it. And then hit backspace. That's gone. Again, I'm making sure every time I trace something that I complete the shape. I don't leave it open. So that's a shape. That's a shape. I try to keep my lines as close as I can in size because you don't want uh, that big of a difference between your, your line sizes. Oh, here's something cool you can do if you're at home and maybe on a printer, near a printer. You can actually print out this coloring sheet and color it and draw it. You fit in the area. I think I have everything. So what I'm going to do now is... Oh, I forgot about that shadow right there. That's going to bug me if I don't get it. Bleep, bloop, bleep, bloop, bleep, bloop. All right. 
view fit in the area if I turn off this layer you can kind of see yeah it looks like a like a line drawing like a something you can color in and now I say that because look there's no there's no gaps anywhere I mean if there are it's because it's all one continuous color like this is all gonna be kinda white I mean if you want obviously you can you know go in and do these smaller parts so that it doesn't you know stand out but I, again I don't even know what picture you're doing so <laughs> you might not have the p same problem that I have so view fit in the area I'm gonna turn this layer off and right now I'm gonna save it as it is because maybe you do want to color this in later hand draw it maybe print it out totally up to you like I, you don't have to but this is the first part of the project this is you know the uh, learn how to create a basic line drawing using an overlay layer part so I'm gonna go ahead and go to file save as a PSD I'm just gonna you know click on that and it's gonna automatically save it you see it says new project it's gonna be in your downloads folder so you gotta go look in your downloads and uh, yeah there it is new project delete all of these I don't need them and I would right click it and rename it like you know digital painting that or, you know what rename it digital painting line drawing okay so now we're ready to color it in and I'm it looks like he's floating in midair so I kinda wanna ground him so I'm gonna turn this back on and I'm going to just finish I guess uh, drawing a line so he's not floating in midair so let me get my brush tool and I'll make this uh, make it about 15 uh, again you don't have to do this if, if your person isn't floating but it's up to you what you want to uh, what you want to trace oh jeez what an un unbelievably crooked line right, there we go that's early in the morning people alright so we got that and then put this over here like so I just think it'll look better. Oh jeez. Can I draw a line or not? Undo. Edit to step backwards. I'm gonna start from over here. Maybe that's what I should do. Alright, there. Oh jeez, can I it's like I said, it's early in the morning, people. Alright, there we go. And go like that. And Let's see if I can draw a straight line. I'm not a coffee drinker, so I just wake up and go. So maybe that's my problem. I need some kind of a caffeine. Now what happened here? I thought I was following the right line. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and keep going. And, all right. Uh, wow, now that one doesn't match up. But, oh, jeez. All right, so I'm going to race this one and see if I can pick it up on the other side the right way All right, so it's like up here and yeah, I'll go like this there we go alright now let's look with see what that looks like view fit the area I'm gonna turn off this layer now there now he's he's got a ground and it'll be much easier to color in I mean if he wanted to he could actually crop some of this out so here's how you crop, if, like if you have all this negative space. I'm going to choose my rectangular select and say I don't want that much. I just want, you know, I don't know, maybe this much. So I select that, image, crop, now it's gone. Select, deselect, and when we get rid of the marching ants. All right, so there's multiple ways to color this in. and you, you don't want to uh, uh, delete this layer yet because you still kind of need it. Um, 
you kind of want to match as close as possible color wise and pattern wise just because uh, otherwise it'll look weird so I know this is going to be a lot of white like really light patterns in there in these white spots um, and I kind of definitely want to do something up here but I'll, maybe I'll add a lens flare or something after I'm all done and if I'm sniffing a lot I'm sorry it's that time of year where the sinuses drain and uh, it's, like I said it's early in the morning alright so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to zoom in on his hair and we'll just do a little bit at a time and now I'm going to show you different ways to, to color this in like I said you don't need this layer on you, you can turn it off and you want to be on this layer see how it's highlighted so that's the layer you want to be on now you can do it one or two ways um, the, the boring way I, and I say this because I, I really kind of don't want my students to do this too much is just to color it in like a, you know one of those coloring apps um, let me turn this on so I can see what color I want and if you want to get the exact color you got your color picker up here and you just put your your mouse over the color you want and it'll go right to it and then you just hit OK and then you just click and then it colors it in so if I turn that off see it colored it all in so you can do it that way you can color each little section that you want um, that's one way you can do it uh, edit undo edit step backward oh jeez we... alright there we go so you can do it that way or you can even use uh, a magic wand tool which is right where is it there it is you might have to hold your mouse button down it's the third one this is object selection I want the magic wand tool and you can select this area if I turn this off I don't know if you guys can see that or not um, but that is all selected and you can even do a gradient which is this one right here and you'll notice it's got two colors it's whatever two colors are right here or you can hit this and choose you know one of these presets I actually like to pick my own colors so as I, uh, I'm gonna turn this back on I want a darker orange here we go now you see it's got this color right here and then this color right here and here's how the gradient tool works you click and then you drag like you know where you click is where that brighter yellow starts and then where you end if I let go is where the darker yellow so you can see it's lighter over here darker over here but you have to use the magic wand tool because if you don't let me just step backward here um, get rid of the selection say you just try to do it you know you don't use the magic wand tool and you just click and drag it's gonna do it's gonna go over everything so you definitely do not want to do that you want to make sure if you do the gradient tool that you use you use a magic wand tool to select something now if you do have a hole somewhere and it bleeds out where you don't want it you have to find the hole and, and cut it off so here I'll give you an example let me turn this off really quick and make a really tiny tiny hole like right here so say uh, I'm in this one oh wrong layer select deselect I gotta be in the drawing layer uh, for some reason it didn't leak out you can kinda see it didn't leak out but sometimes it does so let me select deselect let me make that hole just a little bit bigger I'm just showing this to give you an idea of what happens sometimes if you are trying to color something in and you can't so see how it went outside so now when I try to say use the gradient tool and then click drag it'll go outside so view fit in the area so I don't I don't want to do that so let me zoom in back again and then we'll get rid of there we go all right here's the way I, I really kind of want you to do it though here's how I really uh, and I think this has a better look anyways it's just me all right so but when you uh, so when you color with with pictures on the internet it's gonna be completely different than using the magic wand 
and the gradient tool in the paint bucket is going to be totally totally different uh, unfortunately photo P does not have a paste into option if they did oh my gosh it would be so awesome but they don't so you have to do it kind of the old-fashioned way to color stuff in it'll still work it just takes a little you know a little extra work so what I what you want you to do what I want you to do is we're gonna do this yellow right here I'm gonna go to Google Images and look up pattern design and then uh, go to tools make sure it's large go to color and you can choose any color you want so yellow so find a yellow pattern that you kinda like I like this one I'm going to right click copy image go back to photo P in my browser edit paste now it's not gonna paste it where you want it it's gonna paste it in the corner so get a view fit the area you'll see it right there always in the corner and then I'm going to place that basically over the area that's being colored you might have to edit free transform to make it smaller or bigger and then obviously to get rid of this bounding box hit enter on your keyboard basically you just want to cover what you're trying to color in I'm just trying to color in this yellow this this light yellow spot right there so it's it's completely covered I'm gonna turn that off I'm gonna go back to the drawing layer let me zoom in I'm gonna turn this off because I don't need to see that anymore alright I'm gonna click with my magic wand I got my magic wand tool and I select this area so basically it's the same steps as uh, using the gradient tool except now I'm gonna turn on this layer and you can see there's your selection except I'm not on that layer I'm still on the drawing layer so I need to go to the drawing layer and if I hit backspace it's gonna erase <laughs> what I want to keep I don't want that to happen so edit undo so instead go to select inverse and then hit backspace and there it is it's colored in very nice for you so so far so good now I'll do a maybe this orangey color over here so I'm going to turn that off go back to the drawing layer anytime you want to select something to draw or to color in I'm sorry go to the drawing layer make sure you get your magic wand and then click on that spot and then just to see what it looks like okay so it's kind of an orangey color go back here maybe pick a darker one um, a darker yellow or just a different just a different one altogether um, ooh, that one looks pretty cool it's got the copyright things on them but eh, who cares right click copy image you know what I don't want that one I, I want this one right click copy image alright go back here edit paste now again if you can't see it it's in the corner so view fit the area now we just remember what you're trying to color in I'm gonna move this new layer with the move tool over what I want it to color so it's over his head then I'm gonna go back to the drawing layer I'm gonna turn off layer 3 of that new thing that I popped in and unfortunately I'll have to select that you don't have to select it every time I mean for some reason I select it before I paste it which is stupid because it just gets rid of the selection anyways so I you have to end up selecting it again after you paste it so that's what I would do I'll just wait to select it until after you paste your next your next picture so there it is I I selected that area it's selected I'm gonna turn on this new layer and you can see it it's right there and then you'll get a select inverse backspace and what happened was I just deleted my entire drawing layer because I'm an idiot I didn't see what layer I was on I have to be on layer 3 now I hit backspace there we go alright you know what and if you don't like something guess what all you gotta do is hit backspace you know what I don't like this pattern so I'm going to 
well it works in Photoshop so photo P is different I guess you have to right click and delete I don't want that So right click, copy image, going to go to edit, paste, I'm going to use the move tool, move it over his head, then I'm going to turn it off, I'm going to go to the drawing layer, you see it's highlighted, I'm going to zoom in, use the magic wand tool, select the spot that I want to color in, now I'm going to go back to what I just pasted in, turn it on and go to select inverse and then hit backspace on your keyboard and there it is. Alright so if I turn this off I'm going to show you something else you can do that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if I've taught you guys yet how to use the, the dodge and burn tool but I'm on this layer right here. I'm on. You can see anytime I turn it on and off you can see that it, it, you know, it's over there. So the dodge and burn tool are pretty cool tools. Dodge is a tool that makes things lighter, and the burn tool is something that makes things darker. So here's how this works. I'm on this layer. I got the dodge tool. If you go up here, you can change your settings. I would almost always turn my hardness down to zero. That's just that's just me. It just looks better that way. So if you do use the dodge and burn tool, um, turn it down to zero, and then you can obviously bump up the size that you need. Now here's how this works. I kind of want to do these these lighter parts right here. So I'm going to click, 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 click. You can see it getting a little lighter there. Click, click, click. Oh, I keep doing that. There it is. All right, there is. there's some down here. Oops, I guess it would help if it was on. There we go. Now, if you want to use the burn tool, same thing. Here's the burn tool. Select it. Make sure your hardness is at zero. Bump up the size if you want. And then this, as you can see, makes things darker. So it's a nice way to add a little, I don't know, shading into your, your patterns. So that's something else you can do. All right, so when you get kind of close to being done, um, you'll notice it's got a lot of these like white fringy parts. I would, and look, I don't even have that on. When you have it on, it obviously covers it up, but I want to delete that layer. And I just want to make a new layer. Layer, new layer. And then I'm going to totally color that layer black. I can there you go and that will and then you put that underneath your drawing layer and it'll kind of hide up those pixelated mistakes but the area and you can see I anytime I selected something you can also uh, change the color or the intensity say like uh, you just, I'm just gonna pick a layer uh, like this layer right here. If you go in, if, if you highlight it, you can go to image adjustments and you can mess with the brightness. You see how it gets brighter or darker. 
you can you know experiment with that or uh, image adjustments vibrance I, I use that a lot, quite a lot and you, you can you know make stuff uh, pop out with more of a color it's totally up to you I, I got rid of the kind of the white skin because it kind of looked weird so I I did you know oh, that should really be pink I'll fix that here in a second um but yeah uh, once you get done I remember there being a lens flare somewhere up here, a bright light. So I'm going to try to put that back in. But before I do that, I want to make sure everything's good where I like it. Um, obviously, I want to put my name in there somewhere. Um, but if you if you get it to where you like it and you're happy with it, uh, go ahead and merge those layers. Layer... Uh, why do I, why do I not want to do this flatten image? All right, and it's all flatten image. So you, you now we're going to uh, you don't have to do this. This is just me. F filter render lens flare, and you know wherever that was, you kind of you know I think it was like up there somewhere. You kind of move these around. And then, you know, make that go up. It's different than Photoshop where you can actually place it. And you can, you know, test out the different lens flares. Ooh, I kind of like that one. And make it brighter or less intense. It's totally, totally your call. I kind of want it kind of bright. He's playing. Um, you know, have that kind of nice effect going on. And then at the very end, if you want to put your name, just type, uh, type on the type tool and then find a font you like. They, they usually have good previews over here. I kind of like something classy. So once you get it installed, uh, you just click. And it's going to be really tiny. <laughs> so chances are you have to make it a little bit bigger. And then type in your name, do, 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 do. or your initials. For some reason, it's not letting me. Let me try this again. There we go. Now, if you can't see it because it's going to be black or something, I always like to put the year too. Uh, you know, just to know when I did it. So it's 21. This is my first work of art in the new year. All right, and then you can't see it, so you can always do blending options. And notice I have this selected. I'm going to delete this layer since it's worthless. I'm going to right-click, go to blending options, make this uh, pop out a little bit. Maybe do a outer glow. There we go. Maybe uh, I can't see it as well. There we go. And then if I zoom in on it. You know, put it somewhere inconspicuous. Ooh, fit the area. I don't know if I even like that. That stands out too much. I don't. I don't like my signature to stand out that much. It's not about me. It's about the art that I made. So, oh yeah, that's 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 nice. That's kind of hidden a little bit. Maybe give a little bit. Turn down the opacity just a smidge. So you can kind of see it. There it is. And then, uh, yeah, uh, to save it as a JPEG, you go to File, Export as JPEG. And then, I always bump that up. I want the quality to be really good. And then just hit Save. And then that'll be the one you upload into Google Classroom for my students. Um, to get the grade um, hopefully you enjoyed this you learned something uh, I, I literally went from this picture right here to that that to that I mean that's, that's pretty, pretty pretty cool um hopefully like I said hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, happy photo peeping that's what I call it photo peeping I don't want to say photo peeing 
because then it sounds like you're doing something gross. So have a great day, everybody.